Okay, so I'm going to go to my uh, tool menu here, select a Z sphere, click and drag on the workspace, and hit either the T key or press edit up here. And now I am in edit mode. Now there's a, uh, a thing I like to do when I'm working from reference, which is when I hold the shift key and I snap my camera to an orthographic view, I want it to kind of line up with my references. There's a peculiarity about ZBrush that if you're in edit mode and you are, have ZSphere uh, activated and you hold shift and you click out here, it's gonna just think that you wanna add a bunch of ZSphere's to some spot, which doesn't make any sense. But anyway, the, uh, the way that you can work around that is just leave uh, draw mode. If you're in uh, like tap the W key, uh, which would be move. So we don't actually wanna move it. We just wanna kinda get a sense for lining the camera up. So I'm gonna call this my side view. You can turn symmetry on to kinda get a sense for where the side view actually is. It doesn't make any difference here because we're not working with the symmetrical model. But it looks like that might be the side. So I'm gonna start my thumb here. It's, again, it's totally arbitrary. It doesn't really make any difference. But I'm gonna turn symmetry off and we're gonna enable draw mode by tapping the Q button. And this can be kind of the starting Z-sphere for my thumb. So I'm gonna put one right there on the, the main starting Z-sphere. And then we'll add one more. I'm gonna tap the W key and now that I'm in W, I can actually rotate the camera by holding shift to get a sense for orient the thumb. And I mean, it's all very, very crude at this point, but to just try to get looking at this, now we're sort of looking at it from the back. This is from this side, and this is from the front view, which will be over here. And the way that Z-Spheres work is you wanna keep things as general as possible. We're, we're really not trying to get all of the little details here. We just want to have something that's going to be a starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and add one up here for the wrist. And I'm just hitting W to move and then Q to add another one. If I want this to be a little bit bigger, I can tap the E key, which is scale, W, E, and R, move, rotate, and scale. It's pretty, pretty universal at this point. Let's scoot this guy over add one hand here. So we're sort of getting this section of the geometry. And then off of this, I can add some fingers. So the way that this is gonna be a little bit different than uh, the, I have a previous tutorial where I stay with Z-spheres the whole time is I'm actually going to convert this into Dynamesh relatively quickly, which will liberate us from a lot of the, the constraints that we inherit when we use Z-spheres. They're very, very convenient for getting started, but not that great. So I wanna, um, I wanna move these outer Z spheres, but you can see I'm grabbing this one uh, just because my brush size is so big. So if I make my brush size small enough, then I can just grab these outer Z spheres. And the reason I put one on the main Z sphere and then extend off of that is, is as you start to move these out, you'll get much thicker bases here and I don't really want that. So if I can just find this Z sphere and scoot him back, I'll just hit control Z. So you can see how thick this one is. Maybe that's a bit thicker than we would wanna go. So I'll just tap the E key to shrink it down. So with W active, the, the move functionality, I'm gonna hit shift and click outside the mesh. And you can see, obviously, very, very off. But again, it doesn't, it doesn't actually make any difference at this point. We're just kind of trying to get some very, very crude idea of what's going on. Looks like this one's, this is the pinky here, it might be coming down over there. Try to get this stuff kind of launching off of the hand at the right more or less the right position. So coming over here. Oh, and I have perspective turned off right now. You can you can toggle it on by just hitting P. I really wanna make sure that the fingers are all kind of level. I'm gonna put a plane in here very, very shortly so I understand exactly where that line needs to be. So I'm gonna hit A here, 
which will preview the mesh. And something important happens. It looks like I have a low poly mesh that's maybe just a little bit blurry. And the reason it's blurry is because it's not actually a low poly mesh at all. It's super dense. You can see all these tiny little polygons because ZBrush has a default behavior, which is to add a DynaMesh process to your preview mesh. So I'm going to turn this DynaMesh resolution here to zero. And we can see the result when I do that. Sorry, let me actually make sure that sits. Okay. So here we can see we're actually getting a low poly mesh, which is, which is what we're looking for. But there's actually one additional subdivision, which you can kind of see here. Again, this is just uh, a ZBrush doing a thing that it thinks is useful, which is actually not that useful. And that is giving it an extra subdivision. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this to one. And you can see there we have the actual low poly mesh that I was looking for. So uh, in the next video, we will continue working on refining this very basic geometry. Uh, so stick around for that.